Hi, I'm Grayson Leverance, Chief Marketing Officer at Spiffy. I am here today with Scott Wingo, our CEO and co-founder, to reflect on 2022 and look forward to 2023. Scott, thanks for being here. Absolutely, thanks for having me. Yeah. So let's get started at a high level. I would love for you to tell me about the macroeconomic trends that you are following most closely this year. Absolutely. Um, when we started Spiffy, we started with four mega trends. So we had the convenience oriented customer. We believed that services were going to go digital, just like we saw products go digital. We believed there needed to be better customer experiences for everyone in the auto industry. And then the fourth and final trend was vehicle 2.0. The, the car is going to change more in the next hundred years, uh, in the next 10 years than it has in the last hundred years. Um, so all those mega trends really took a big step forward this year. And then as, if we look at the economics, we had some interesting things go on. So we had this huge surge in inflation, which caused high gas prices. And what happened there is the consumer paused buying things or goods. But at the same time, you would think they would have slowed down on services, but services actually accelerated. Um, and I think what's happening is in this post COVID world, people are still craving interaction with other people, family members. So they're traveling, they're driving their cars. So counterintuitively, we saw a slowdown in the product part of the economy, but not the services part of the economy. Yeah, really interesting. And, and that gets me to my next question. So thinking about those macro trends, tell me a little bit more about the impact that they had on the automotive industry as a whole. Yeah, so, so um, we're almost back to pre-pandemic flying uh, levels with, with travelers in the United States. Um, we're about 10% off, and it's that international traveler hasn't really kicked in 100% yet, but domestic travel is back to where it was. Mm -hmm. So what that means for the auto industry is the rental car segment is quite robust. So I don't know if you've tried to rent a car or been on a plane, but the planes are very busy and the rental cars are, are mostly sold out. Um, so that was very good for that part of the world. The um, consumers are driving, so the mileage that consumers are driving has gotten back to pre-pandemic levels, even with the inflation of gas, which is a little counterintuitive. Uh, so people are going on road, road trips, um, and that's causing a lot of maintenance out there. So so feels like it was, even though you read about recessionary headwinds, we haven't really felt it in the car segment. And then last, we're starting to see a defrosting of the new car um, availability. So we had a long period of time there where we couldn't get chips um, for vehicles and that stopped new car manufacturing. Here in the fourth quarter of 2022, we started to see that, that fix itself a bit and that's caused used car prices to really come down very dramatically where they were at unprecedented levels. Right, yeah, it's all so interesting. So we've talked about the mega trends, the macro trends, how that impacts automotive so let's talk about spiffy tell me about the way that you saw these trends impact our business this year yeah so these these trends were tailwinds for us so we ended up beating our plan by a 15 to 20 percent which is always good um, so that was exciting um, and in fact we'll show, show a chart here um, that shows what that looks like um, we're growing over 90 percent year over year and you know what uh, what some of the fun things that happen is if you look at this chart for example here in the first two quarters of 2022 uh, we did more revenue than we did on all of 2020 um, and you know you've been here for quite a while so if we look back to 2016, yep. <laughs> we actually probably do more in a week than we do in the whole year of 2016. Yeah. So, so that, that doubling compounding is really kind of uh, makes your head explode. If, if we had the head explode emoji, we would both have that on right now. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It's been a, a really, really exciting year. Scott, what was the thing that you had the most fun working on this year? Yeah, as an entrepreneur, um, it's kind of fun. I like both scaling things and then new things. Um, so another chart to throw up there uh, is our services that we've performed. So that's a uh, you know way we think about how we're having an impact on the industry. Um, if you look prior to this year, we did about a million services. This year alone, we'll do 850,000 services. So we'll do almost as many services this year than we did in the whole entirety of the company. Um, so uh, you know, with our work with fleets and consumers, we're really cranking up the number of services we're doing 
doing every day. So that's fun to think about the scale. We have over 300 vans out there across the United States um, and over 500 technicians doing services. And we get into that three to 4,000 services a day range, which has been exciting. So that scale problem is really interesting and fun to solve as an entrepreneur. On the new side, um, you know, we've had a whirlwind experience with this new product called Smart Tumblr, yeah. where uh, customers came to us with a problem and we've solved that. And getting that from a version one to a version two has been a fun problem to solve and then also scaling that. Absolutely. Yeah, the, the definition of high growth. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about the flip side of that and tell me about the biggest challenge that you faced this year and what you did to overcome it. Yeah, so it's been a hard hiring environment. So, you know, our, our awesome talent team has done a great job of reacting to that. So, for example, we now can, um, from the time we get a job listing out there to hiring someone takes about 48 hours now. So we used to have that on a much longer spectrum mm -hmm. and we are active to the market and really aggressively went after that. So kudos to our team on that. That's an example of, of changing a business process to reflect the reality of the world. Um, and I would go back to the smart tumbler, you know, the 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 one changing consumer behavior that's impacting our customers is post COVID, um, we have this perfect storm where consumers are very sensitive to odors um, and there's more odors than ever in cars. So people are smoking tobacco, vaping, there's cannabis, and then there's all kinds of people eating their cars and all kinds of odors uh, and people hate odors. So that's created a perfect storm for our customers. So one of our interesting challenges was creating the smart Tumblr to enable our customers, um, which are the businesses that, that rent or have person-to-person -person, um, rentals of cars, um, to make it better for their customers. Absolutely. Thanks. All right, so let's look forward to next year and talk about the industry. What are your expectations for the automotive industry going into 2023? Yeah, it's going to be an interesting transition. So we have used cars coming down in prices, new cars are coming out. So I think for a while there, what I call vehicle 2.0 was on pause. We didn't have a lot of new EVs coming out because we couldn't even make internal combustion engine vehicles. So I think we're going to see um, an explosion of new models or of EVs. And there's going to be a lot of innovation around that. So that'll be exciting to watch. Um, there's uh, one area, you know, I watch is AI and machine learning and that ties into self-driving cars. So there's going to be a lot of movement there that'll be interesting to keep an eye on. So I think we'll see a, a lot of news there. Um, that one always comes with controversy because safety is always involved and legalities of, you know, if, if a computer's driving the car, who's at fault when something goes wrong? So it'll be interesting to watch that trend. Yeah, absolutely. And tell me and tell everyone about your vision for Spiffy next year in 2023. Yeah, so we've we had a busy year this year. Um, one of the things we haven't talked about is we introduced Spiffy brakes, um, and we're doing a lot around tires. So uh, you know, we think about our three growth pillars, which are different geographies, different services, and different types of customers. I, th I think we're really going to spend this year, 2023, um, you know, going deeper on some of those things. For um, for geography, it'll be largely franchises. So we've we've uh, signed up about 30 areas for franchisees, launched about half. So we have a lot of work to launch what we uh, signed up, uh, and then we'll sign up more this year. So that'll be what we do on geographies. On services, I, th I think we're good. I think with brakes and tires, oil and wash. We have a lot to work on, so um, no new plans there. And then as far as new types of customers, we're seeing, you know, we, we got our first start with fleets with rental cars, but we see five or six other segments forming. Um, transportation and logistics is is uh, is coming to us wanting solutions. Um, we have all kinds of other fleets uh, that we're working with. So we'll be really expanding the types of fleets and diversifying what we do there. Absolutely. It's going to be an exciting year. It will. Anything else that you'd like to share? Uh, no, you know, we have a lot of stakeholders here at Spiffy. We have our customers, we have our teammates, uh, we have our investors. So uh, it all has to come together to have a great year like we did. And just want to thank uh, all those constituents on a great year. Yes. Thank you, Scott. I really appreciate the time and thank you all for watching.